Hello everyone. I've been in the field of research since 2014. I've solved multiple complex problems. Like there was multiple billion user problems. But today on the stage, I would like to tell you about the biggest problem that all the 7 billion people on earth will face in the next 5 years. It is water. See, for me, it all began in 2015 where we faced floods in Chennai. There was water of about 40 feet to 50 feet of three floors, four floors high. It was running on the roads. So in my street where I lived, the water was around seven feet high. We were actually living in the first floor. But it was a total disaster. Yeah, everybody came out. Three months passed by, four months passed by. Again in April and May, we started again buying water and water tankers. That is when I thought, okay, what happened? See, there was so much amount of water. The rainfall is there. The rainfall is not adequate. It is abundant. It is more than abundant. But still, there is a problem. And that is why we were buying water. The groundwater is not there. I started analyzing. Then, after research, I came to know that the water has two phases. See, the first phase the water has is the cost phase. The second is the commodity phase. If you see, all the problems that the United Nations has told in the Sustainable Development Goals that we need to take care of in the next 10 years, five of the top problems is because of water. The main problem for poverty for the people is water. 2.2 billion people on planet Earth out of 7 billion people live in poverty. They don't have access to fresh water. That is actually 9.2% to 10%. The study has been done by United Nations and the diseases because of lack in sanitation, because of lack in water, because of not hygienic water and clean water availability, the people face diseases. There is no water to grow food. The food we are eating, it needs water. It takes 5,000 liters of water to cultivate one kilo of rice. So that we consuming, there is more necessities. The ecosystems are there, the marine ecosystem, the trees, plants, everything. So it needs water. So, the ultimatum problem for everything was water. And the second thing is commodity. Okay, in one side, the water is causing all these problems. In the second side, water is traded as commodity. If you see, this is actually fascinating. So, whoever trades on stock, start trading on the companies who are involved in water or water treatment or related to water because they are increasing. Their stocks are increasing very rapidly at a rate of, at a rate of 9 to 10% every year. If you see the scale of gold, in 1980, 8 grams of gold was only 1,330 rupees. As on two weeks back, it's 52,000. So the increase in percentage is 3,960%. The oil was around 1,200% increased. The gas is around 1,800%. Whereas the water in 1985 or 80s, we don't have the water bottles. It has actually emerged in 1995. Whereas if you take the commodity as water, it is increased by 10,000%. The least water bottle that is available is of 20 rupees. And we don't mind even spending 100 rupees or 150 rupees for a natural mineral water. It even ranges to 5,000, 10,000, 25,000. So if we see, then we analyzed what is the cost. So if the, the water is actually a cost, water is actually a commodity, then what is the phenomenon that it is actually turning water? Then if you see, the actual phenomenon is pollution and wastage. All the 70% of water bodies across India, 351 rivers are polluted. 72,000 million liters of dirty water is being sent into the rivers, ponds, lakes, whatever you see every day is from industries. 6.2 billion liters of common waste water is being utilized by humans like we throw on an average a person contributes to 50 to 60 liters of water every day so with all this water pollution what we are planning is there is wastage on one side there is pollution on one side and what is the solution for those phenomena is for pollution it is purification so yes obviously if there is water polluted you need to purify the second is for wastage it is control and then we found out the purification is a technology that is existing since 1808 by Robert Tom. So he was the first one who has invented the modern day water purification system. 
Since then, there was multiple technologies that has come into picture. As of 2022, there is 30 plus technology for water purification. It is existing, it is still there, many were practically implemented, but still the water was not purified, it remains there. In 2017, we and my scientists from Israel, India, Germany, so we were actually collaborated. Uh, we had started a department called as Water and Organization and we started doing research on the purification technologies of water. Then we found like we tried multiple methods, we tried chemical methods, we tried bacterial methods, we started culturing our own bacteria, but it all failed. Then we inspired one thing that is social network. See, social network is where we can make friends with anybody, right? So then we inspired this concept and we cultured a bacteria where the microbial bacteria that we put inside the dirty water starts making friends with all the chemical and biological antibodies and then it will convert everything into sludge. So this is the technology that we have developed wherein it is an alternative to the existing sewage treatment systems. So if you, if you heard Delhi, all the governments across India, all the international places wherever you go, the water that we use for flushing, the water that is used for agriculture, the water that is used for irrigation and the common purposes is all sewage treated water because the water is not available today, as on today. Then what we thought, but that is not so effective. So we have implemented this system wherein the footprint of this, the advantage of this is like the footprint that is required to treat this is only one fifth. And the existing sewage treatment systems that are implemented is not enough to purify a large scale of water body like a river or a stream or a large reservoir. Whereas with this system, it was possible. We had around 10 hours, less than 10 hours of retention time. The energy consumption was three times lesser than the existing ones. And then in the next thing, what we do is like, we started comparing this process with the existing process that has been implemented across India and nations. So if you see the activated sludge process or the microbial batch reactor and the sequence batch reactor, they all had some constraints, whether it is on manpower, whether it is on skilled labor or machinery. So we started overcoming everything. And then finally, we actually treated this water. So this was the actual output that we have achieved. We have taken the water from the most polluted river, which is called as Kuvam, it is in Chennai. So we take, we had taken the water and then we started comparing it with the existing processing technique and our processing technique. We have achieved biggest results in it. So if you see, that is the slide for, that is the results of the raw affiliate, wherein the standards that has been given by the NGT is like, you need to have the COD and BOD less than 10 and 50, where we have achieved a BOD of six and we have achieved a COD chemical oxygen demand of less than 30. The suspended solids were negligible and the fecal coliform, the government has said that the practical version of the reduction of fecal coliform, like the limit can be around 200 or 100 million parts per uh, 100 million parts. Whereas we have achieved to less than 2 million parts. And the next thing what we are planning is, see till now as a scientist, we have created a technology for purification but there is no technology that can that cannot be created for water control see if you want to stop the wastage of water you need to control if we stand 20 minutes in a hot shower it takes i mean we contribute to around 50 to 100 liters of water just reducing one minute in your hot shower will save 20 liters. We are having water bottles. We start drinking water bottles. We drink half a bottle. We leave it that water bottle. So like that, on an average, a human contributes two liters every day. If you're going out, you, you take a sip, you leave a water bottle or you leave a glass. So you stop that. And the next thing is, if you leak, if you have a leakage tap in your home, it contributes to four liters every night. So you have your leak tap, you go, you sleep, come in the morning, you see the four liters bucket will be full. See, till now what, what all we have did is something like 
we were escaping from the system we have not we are going towards extension that is the actual truth there was three types of people i would like to end this with a small story there are three types of people one is called fool one is called wise one is called smart what the fool did is he did the mistake every time so every time he did the mistake he didn't learn he repeats it the second thing is wise he did a mistake he understand that it's a mistake and then he didn't repeat it the third is smart he observes the mistake and then he never commits in our life we were fools till now because we didn't say water like it actually is turning into biggest commodity 15 years ago nobody would have thought that we would have we would have water purifiers we would be buying waters water bottles and everything but now around 1000 to 2000 rupees we'd be spending every day on water there is actually it can be around 1% or 2% of income in the forthcoming years it will be in a hyperbolic curve it will be in exponential rise you'd be spending around 30 to 40% of your income on water the water meters will be coming they'll be calculating every drop you spend like it will be the costliest commodity more than whatever the commodity you see whether it is oil gas gold real estate or anything our ancestors has given us the clean water to live to drink they have given us the clean nature the only thing that we can give or it is our responsibility that we need to deliver the same to our next generation because whatever the facilities that we may given it all lasts for lifetime like it may or it may not last for lifetime but the water and the nature will be actually deciding the future they live in if it is not worthy then it is not worthy you can buy a bungalow at the prime place but after 10 years if there is no ground water then it's of mere waste so what i urge everyone is industrially there has been certain technologies that we can implement but we need to bring a water discipline in ourselves because if it is not now it is going to be never so we need to choose which is the stand that we are going to take whether we are going to give a sustainable planet to our next generation or whether we are going to escape the system and we are just going to live as in what we are doing right now and then we are just going to rot everybody in hell like even after 30 years we'll also be facing the huge scenario thank you